The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, throw the video. Okay, so it is four o'clock in the morning. I just watched the Gibby pilot and let me tell you, this shit was straight ass. It was ass. <laughs> Okay, before I get into the mess that we have for today's video, uh, I just wanted to do a little shameless plug before we get started. My new book called mm, Do Not Call Me Sis. It is a book I wrote with me and my friend named Amaya Janelle. We spent our entire time writing it. It is a collection of essays about fandom, massage noir, ableism, entertainment, and white feminism. It's about 150 something pages long. Physical copies are signed and they come with a special gift. And it's also available in digital and audiobook on my website, harriettahook.com. Um, if you're interested in learning more about social issues and all of that but want not wanting to be bored to fucking tears this is a good starter so yeah moving forward i'm gonna go ahead and talk about why y'all clicked on this video so for those of you guys who don't know the dan schneider cinematic universe is just kind of like a group of these shows on nickelodeon that all are just like existing with one another and when people think of dan schneider they think a series like icarly which recently the reboot of that got canceled that surprised me not gonna lie but people also know him for victorious they know him for drake and josh and they also know him for his later works that were like game shakers and henry danger which are important we're gonna bring those back up but then people also know more of him from like the 90s with his work with nickelodeon and as we know nickelodeon parted ways with him y'all know how i feel about dan snyder okay y'all already know there's a whole bunch of youtube videos on this site that just talk about all the issues with dan snyder and a lot of my start on my youtube channel was just talking about like the mess that was up in his work this show right here it was either between gibby which we will be talking about today or sam and cat Mind you, both of these shows that Nickelodeon was in the process of making and greenlining, which was basically another Dan Snyder production, they were both shows about side characters from another one. Sam, I wouldn't necessarily say Sam is like a side character, but she wasn't the main girl. Sam came from my Carly. Kat came from fucking Victorious. And they decided to, you know what? Let's test another show up in the waters. Let's also give another side character, Gibby, his own series. Now, what exactly is Gibby? What is the entire premise of what this show even is? Because when you think of Gibby, if you are familiar with what iCarly is, Gibby is just a character that doesn't necessarily contribute much to the plot. Like, I'm gonna be honest, anytime somebody say Gibby, I think about Emily Ratajkowski. I don't even think about the character himself. I think of the person that played his fucking girlfriend in the series. Y'all, I love Emily. By the way, I love her. Y'all ain't never gonna make me hate her. Sorry, y'all are crooked. Y'all are like really fucking crooked right now and I hate it. But Gibby, for the most part, I feel like you need to know some background about him before you go up into this series. Because this isn't a situation where you cannot watch the previous show before and not really know much of anything about the show going on. Mind you, I'm not going to be putting any type of clips or anything like that in here, mainly because this pilot was leaked. It was either between this or Sam and Cat. And Sam and Cat is ass. Like, it's literally a fucking terrible show. But one thing I'll give Sam and Cat credit for is that it actually had a decent pilot, in my opinion. This Gibby pilot no was not cutting it whatsoever and they were like you know what we see very little potential with this let's not even do anything with it so it was like picking between which one was worse Sam and cat or gibby Sam and cat won and then also part of the reason i think Sam and cat got that is because jeanette and ariana had more fans i'd say they had like a fan base and gibby was just a little side character from icarly that nobody really gave a flying fuck about mind you i have so many strong opinions when it comes to gibby's character and so many of those problems were very present within this pilot because yeah let's go ahead and get into it gibby the pilot is basically about gibby himself he basically gets in trouble in the middle of like class it has something to do with his pet weasel or whatnot the teacher's like ass is burning it's weird it's not good <laughs> 
<laughs> Damn, y'all didn't even get into it. Y'all already know it's trash. But basically, Gibby gets in trouble and he has to do lunch duty at the middle school. Because as you guys know, Ridgeway, the high school and the middle school are like connected to each other. I don't know. But it just kind of frustrated me because they was always in that same school set in iCarly when we know damn well how old they were throughout the run. So he ends up being like the lunchroom monitor at the middle school there's like this group of bullies picking on this group of kids they're basically like the unpopular kids the air quote losers of the school Gibby basically stands up for them he defends them but also he's like oh yeah these are my friends mainly in doing that so like the other kids will like stop bullying them so then we go after school and we go to like this rec center and shit happens things are going on it's whatever like stuff is going on at the rec center it's just uh, tokenism not funny jokes lots of screaming yelling and nothing is really sticking i'm really trying to get through the plot first before i go into the problems with it because it's a whole lot so we have all of that long story short gibby gets hired at the rec center and then next thing you know there's like a robbery going on at the rec center these two burglars break in that is like your typical family entertainment trope that somebody just breaks into like where somebody is working in and they come and like save the day those middle schoolers come in they defend gibby and then next thing you know it's ends. they're like yeah we're cool this is how the premise of the series is gonna go so now that you know the premise of the show and what exactly it was if it sounded terrible to you it most definitely was now we need to go ahead and get into the problems with it first of all the pilot starts off extremely chaotic as fuck which is not necessarily a bad thing but it's chaotic and not funny like it's not funny at all i was not laughing at all watching this entire thing okay and i mainly within like the first 10 minutes of this i went ahead and put my finger on what the main problem is some characters are side characters for a reason there is a reason Gibby was a side character. The only thing to Gibby's character is that he's just the weird kid. That's just pretty much anything to him. Gibby kind of has like no personality in my opinion. He's just there to be quirky and funny. And also, as I mentioned, that I had a lot of problems with the way Gibby was portrayed in iCarly. There's just so much fat phobia that went into his character when it came to iCarly. But here, they still played a little bit into that because there used to be this running gag of Gibby constantly taking his shirt off and it's supposed to be funny because he's fat and they did that here again. And I'm just like, it wasn't funny in iCarly. It's not funny here in the Gibby pilot. So it felt like there was no type of character development with Gibby period. Gibby has always felt the same from the beginning of iCarly when he was introduced towards its end but also the pilot was reminding me of why I didn't necessarily like the later end of iCarly that much anyway. Mind you iCarly it used to be one of my favorite shows but I just can't no more. After I read Jeanette McCurdy's book I learned a whole bunch of stuff and then so much of the racist shit and misogynistic shit within it makes me very uncomfortable and also how this show portrays homeless people I fucking hate it. It's absolutely disgusting. It has its highlights it has its great moments but overall it's just a show that I've just decided to leave in the past. The later end of iCarly, Gibby went from being a side supporting character, like, you know, not in like the opening credits or whatnot. He ended up coming later in in the show as basically like as a friend of Carly, Sam and Freddie. He didn't necessarily work on iCarly, but they had him on the show all the time. And so much of Gibby's character was just like these three just being assholes to him. Okay, and that's the thing with like a lot of family entertainment humor. A lot of the humor just focuses on everybody being a fucking dickhead to each other. And that was just kind of like how they were to Gibby. They wanted to help Gibby, but then they also like took pity on him too and still weren't necessarily nice to him either. Because that entire situation where Carly was like pretending to be like with Gibby, like on a date or whatnot, she was not nice. She was not fucking nice. And one thing that pisses me off, as I said, Tasha, who <laughs> Emily Ratajkowski, that's who she plays. She plays Gibby's girlfriend on the show. They constantly were making jokes about how someone like her could 
like Gibby, how someone like her could have a crush on Gibby. Like I said, the entire purpose of Gibby's character within Not Carly was to make Carly, Sam, and Freddie feel better about themselves because they were not that nice. <laughs> and when they saw that Gibby actually had a partner, they were just like, there's something wrong with her. Why would you want to be with this person? Like, no. The existence of Gibby's character makes me really fucking mad. So to see that they wanted to give Gibby his own show, I felt like they wanted to make up for how bad I currently treated him. But no, it didn't necessarily make up for that. If anything, it was just rehashing everything that was a problem with his character in the past here. But like I said, it Gibby like was in the later half of iCarly a lot more than he was in like the first run and I got irritated with his presence on screen because Gibby didn't necessarily do much of anything like he had his episodes here and there where he shined the most or whatever but no like so much of his purpose within the show was just kind of be there on the side making little side jokes or whatnot or basically he was just there to make the other characters feel better about themselves because it's like okay Carly Sam and Freddie aren't gonna be mean to each other but they need another person to be fucking rude to and it's Gibby so that's the issue Gibby themselves is the main problem with the pilot Gibby is just not that interesting of a character to have his own show it just no it, it just wasn't working because he wasn't particularly all that interesting in I like, hardly he has like no personality I was bored it wasn't great and then also the other people that they have within the series very much unfunny it basically had your typical annoying Dan Snyder humor in there you had your gross out humor in there you had your loud screaming to try to make something seem funny when it isn't like it was very much unfunny but then there's also like weird sexual humor in it too and I'm like yeah you can tell this is a Dan Snyder pilot because <sighs> <sighs> But also there were some things that I noticed in Gibby that I ended up seeing in two other Dan Schneider shows that came later on in the run. And that was Henry Danger in Game Shakers. So much of the Gibby pilot, it was basically rehashed in Game Shakers and Henry Danger. Because in Henry Danger, there is like this machine that like makes food for you. You tell the machine what you want and then it gives it to you. We saw that in here, but then also like the high tech building thing that they had going on that was also present in both Henry Danger but also in Game Shakers too. A lot of the humor within this show was also present in Game Shakers just as well with a lot of the loud ass screaming and whatnot and then we had the typical mean annoying ass little white girl in the show too that was like rehashed in um Henry Danger just as well. It's just they were like picking apart what they wanted to keep from the Gibby pilot and then put it in those two other shows too. Henry Danger and Game Shakers are two shows that are just like a mixed bag for me. It has its high points and it has its low points but overall Game Shakers is the worst show. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. That's part of the reason why it ended so early but Henry Danger went on longer too and then also Henry Danger actually had like a big ass fan base yeah it, it was a big deal so much of that had to do with a lot of people like following you know jace norman and riel downs i've been following riel for like years though at this point harry and danger just garnered so much of a bigger fan base and so much of it had to do with its cast let's be honest when it comes to iCarly I think part of the reason why Sam and Cat won is because a lot of people actually like Sam's character and Jeanette McCurdy can carry on her own. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. I think Jeanette McCurdy is a very talented woman. Noah Monk, I don't want to sit here and say that he isn't talented, but the Gibby character is just something that just became stale after a while and it just wasn't funny anymore. He was just there. He was just there to make everyone else feel better about themselves. It, it was just frustrating and then also with iCarly it felt like they didn't necessarily know what they wanted to do with Gibby and then also here in the Gibby pilot it was pretty clear that they didn't know what they wanted to do with Gibby either because Carly, Sam, and Freddie are gone they're not at Ridgeway anymore it's just Gibby there by himself and it just kind of seems like nobody really fucking with him like that I get it because part of the reason why a lot of people only really accepted Gibby in the first place is because like he was friends with Carly, Sam, and Freddie. Anytime people in the Gibby pilot mentioned something about Gibby, they were like, oh yeah, you were on iCarly, yada, yada, yada. Like Gibby being on iCarly was the only thing he really had going for himself. People didn't actually like him as a character. But also, like I said, Gibby's character is rooted in fat phobia. That is literally the fucking truth. It is. I'm sorry, but when you make a show 
based on a character that is just deeply rooted in a big issue that society needs to handle better i just no, because it was just like I said, it was like same humor, same this and that and the third. But I'm gonna be honest, I felt like they wasted their money making this pilot. The Gibby pilot honestly feels like it would have worked better as like a backdoor pilot, I'd say. And I'd say like backdoor pilots are a little bit safer than to do like a full on pilot because with a full on pilot, a lot of times you're built building a new set in this and that and the third. And they did reuse a lot of the sets in um the Gibby pilot of course they reused the school set that's the only set I think they really reused but then they had other new ones and whatnot this would have worked better as like a backdoor pilot but also part of the reason I feel like it doesn't necessarily work as a backdoor pilot because Carly Sam and Freddie are gone they're not here they're nowhere to be found and it's weird because they're acting like in this pilot that Carly Sam and Freddie just kind of don't exist like of course I Carly the name of the show was called that shit but it's just it was ass that's the best way to put it it was just ass <laughs> ass 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 by big sean usually i try not to like throw around that term when i'm talking about something that i don't like or that i think is terrible but no it was ass <laughs> okay i'm gonna stop saying that <laughs> Overall, uh, like I said, I didn't put any clips or anything like that or pictures in here mainly because I didn't want to risk this video getting taken down. But yeah, the Gibby pilot was leaked. Um, we can see for ourselves now why it didn't get greenlit. And that's pretty much all I gotta say. I just wanted to get on here and give my thoughts and opinions about what I just saw. Cause huh? let me go ahead and edit this shit real quick mm, do not call me sis it's available for purchase on my website hariannahook.com also y'all i was in the middle of drawing y'all see that this is how you know late <laughs> i was in the middle of drawing but yeah um uh, do not call me sis me and amaya's book available for purchase thank you guys so much for watching deeply do appreciate it and yeah have a good day night or whatever time of the day that you're watching this video i just hope you're having a good time okay thank you goodbye now, now that you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous yet fabulous. Because the Utonia made them a shoe. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They come in through and fight, oh. and everyone they're shocking. Oh. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical acts. They come in through and they come in. Just in the